Welcome, everyone, and f welcome uh, to this uh, live update from Galilee. Behind me is the Valley of Armageddon. I think it's kind of symbolic uh, that uh, we're talking about prophecy and such a prophetic place behind. Um, earlier, I was... Uh, I, I was just announcing that we're going to come live at 5 p.m. and there were several takeoffs from the nearby airbase, from Ramad David Air Base. Um, Israel is engaged in an ongoing um, um, situation right now in the Gaza Strip, and there were several airstrikes that uh, were carried in the last few hours um, uh, at Hamas targets, and so we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. 1995 was the uh, was the year that the Jerusalem Act was uh, a bill that was passed in the US Congress and ever since and that bill basically says that the American um, the Americans will move their embassy to Jerusalem forthwith there was a clause there that actually for national security security reasons gave the American president the right to veto that decision and to postpone it in six months. And ever since 95, um, we see president after president signing the veto, using that clause, and pushing that more and more and more. And even the first thing that President Trump did, he had to do that in order to, to first get a grip of, of what is going on here and try to understand how he can move forward with all of that. The um, situation in the Middle East uh, basically forced him to take a fresh look at what is going on in the Middle East, in, in Israel with the Palestinians as well. Um, we know that um, he uh, understood that um, probably in his lifetime he will not get to see a full comprehensive um, peace deal with the Palestinians and the Israelis and this is why he started using the term the ultimate deal and that is what a lot of people misunderstood the minute he used the term ultimate deal and the minute he used the term peace with uh, Arab countries and Israel Jerusalem and appeasing the Palestinians was no longer something that he was considering. In fact, he realized that the more we push uh, and the more we, we postpone any solution for Jerusalem, the, the more we push away any, any, any chance for peace in the Middle East. Um, it's interesting because biblically, there will be peace, a fake peace, a false peace. There will be peace. And during that peace, Israel will have the chance to build a temple in Jerusalem, which means that in order to facilitate that, Jerusalem must be recognized as Israel's capital and Israel must um, have the right over not only Jerusalem, but eventually also over the Temple Mount itself. So quite frankly, I never thought for a single minute that Jerusalem will be divided um, by um, any peace treaty uh, that will be forced on Israel. And, and the reason is very simple. Um, there is really no one to talk to and there is nothing to talk about right now with the Palestinians. You guys need to understand I was part of the negotiating team between the Israelis and the Palestinians, of course, on the Israeli side, when we handed Jericho over. In fact, we handed Jericho over to the Palestinians almost this week. Um, it was 23 years ago. Now, that, of course, tells you how old I am. I was 21 years old at the time, 22 years old. But the point is that even then and there, it was clear to me that there can never be peace with the Palestinians, not because of anything but the fact that we're both talking on the same exact thing. We claim Jerusalem is ours, they claim Jerusalem is theirs. We claim Israel is ours, they claim Israel is theirs. We claim we have a right to live here and this is a Jewish state. They claim we have no right to live here. This is a Palestinian state. And therefore, any cosmetic solution or, or uh, 
plaster that you put on the, on the little scratch will never change the situation that we're dealing with as another side that has no intention to see us staying here for the long run. Now, this is exactly the same ideology Iran has. Iran has been saying for the longest time publicly that Israel has absolutely no right to exist. Therefore, they're pushing for the means and the terms and the, uh, and the um, I guess, the um, situation that will allow them to bring about the result of Israel gone from the map. Now, Iran, we, we know that for the last few hours, the Israeli uh, inner secret service, uh, the Shin Bet, after interrogating several Hamas operatives that we caught infiltrating into Israel, we um, basically um, we uh, confirmed what we uh, suspected for the longest time that Iran is sponsoring Hamas effort to um, to start another wave of violence and they're paying people they're recruiting people in the streets giving them money to come and run to the Israeli the border fence in order to to uh, somehow uh, pose a, a, a threat and maybe hopefully they think they will get killed and let's Again, talk first about the move of the embassy, and then I want to talk about the situation in Gaza because it is really, really serious. I posted earlier on Facebook uh, a word from Amir on what is going on there, and, and it is really sad that the nations of the world cannot understand that there is a terrorist organization funded by a terrorist regime in Iran, and they are recruiting women and children to run towards uh, an Israeli military that is protecting a sovereign country in order to infiltrate into that territory and bring about a way for their own terrorists to, um, um, to blend in and do what they want to do. Um, the American embassy officially moved to Jerusalem. The ceremonies have ended or are in the process of, of coming to an end in, in the next few minutes. It is done. It is official, uh, and um, the uh, uh, the seal of the U.S. embassy has been unveiled. It is it is what it is. That's it. In fact, I honored that with a red "Behold Israel" shirt, just uh, as a way to to appreciate to show my appreciation to the Americans. But but I do want you to understand that that was something that enraged more the Europeans than the Arabs themselves. Think about it. Saudi Arabia is saying nothing. Jordan is saying nothing. Um, Egypt is saying nothing. Um, the uh, United Arab Emirates is saying nothing. Bahrain is saying nothing. You would expect the, the Muslim world to be so outraged, yet they say nothing. The only one we hear that is complaining is Rajib type Erdogan and the Europeans. Believe it or not, the European were about to condemn the move of the American embassy to Jerusalem and there, because the rules of the EU are that either a condemnation can be accepted by all members or it cannot um, be uh, passed, uh, it cannot pass as a condemnation of the EU. And because of Austria and Hungary and the Czech Republic and Poland that opposed it, the EU could not condemn neither America for moving the embassy nor Israel for having Jerusalem as its capital. Believe it or not, but we are watching how the two feet of, of, of that new revived Roman Empire they're, they're not united. They're clay and iron, just as the prophet Daniel said. I talked about it earlier when I talked about how I believe the Antichrist will come from the western part of Europe. But I also uh, talked about the fact that the EU as of now is not united. It is definitely not united. It's not a union that has much unity anymore. And all of that thanks to the uh, unbelievable crisis of immigration that is going on right there. Now, 
Um, the U.S. Embassy has moved, and by that, ladies and gentlemen, Jerusalem is now is getting recognition of uh, world powers. Now, besides America, in a couple days, Guatemala, other, and then later on, we have some other uh, countries, um, El Salvador, we know that we're going to have Honduras, we're going to have Romania, we're going to have the Czech Republic, one by one. They are following the leadership of President Trump and moving, um, and moving um, their embassies to Jerusalem. By probably by midsummer, we're going to have five different embassies already, or six different embassies, and it's going and still continuing. People understand if the Americans move their embassy and nothing happened, they can move their embassies as well, and they can only benefit from their relationship with Israel. That, of course, bring us closer to the, the description of what I've been always saying, that Israel is strong, Israel is safe, Israel is secured. You and I know that um, Israel doesn't want to kill Palestinians. I mean, it, it, the Palestinians literally commit suicide as we speak right now. If they only stayed where they are, and we wouldn't do anything. They're trying to infiltrate into our territories, into our military camps, into our kibbutzes and settlements that are outside of Gaza. We don't want anything to do with them. We don't. We we got we we pulled out of Gaza years ago, and we we don't want to have any clashes with them. Yet they understand that unless they, they, they run like uh, suicidals um, to the fence, um, no one will uh, probably uh, get their attention. It's very sad because Hamas promised them schools and never provided, health care never provided, housing and never provided, jobs never provided, nothing. Nothing, not He starves the people. Two million people are in Gaza. The people have no food. The people have no health care. The people are, there, there's no hope in Gaza. And now they, Hamas, all they do is pay them. Okay, you want money? Get money, but you need to go and act against Israel. That's what they do. And Hamas is telling the young people that are so desperate. He's, this is, look. You're talking about 65% unemployment amongst the youngsters over there. 44% unemployment in general. The highest unemployment in the world, I think. Hamas is telling the people, if you die by, with the clashes against Israel, you're going to reach heaven. Now, when you live in hell, you want to reach heaven. When your life is like hell, heaven sounds great. And so those, those very desperate young people are just running in helping terrorists blending among them. 40,000 people are right now gathering in the largest gathering along the border of Israel with Gaza in 12 different spots. Um, at least in four different cases, we noticed um, groups of terrorists, armed terrorists, on their way to the fence under the guise of popular innocent protest. Unlike uh, all the gatherings before, this time we see amazing number of women that Hamas gathered to be in the front line, knowing that Israelis will not shoot women or children. They're gathering women, they're gathering children, they put them as human shields, and the terrorists are right behind them with guns and with explosives. They're using kites to send some very hot coals uh, in order to burn the Israeli agricultural fields. They're using... Um, you know they're shooting from Hamas outpost. They're they're shooting mortar. I mean they're they're trying everything they can. Now I know that it's going to sound weird what I'm about to say, but Israel does not look at the Palestinians as any existential threat on our uh, on 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 our country. You understand? If anything, we want them to do well. Them doing well is us doing well as well. Uh, the, the problem is every time we try to help them, they are those who, who basically uh, hurt themselves. For example, in the riots a couple days ago, what the Palestinians destroyed is the pipeline that Israel brings natural gas into Gaza. They destroyed the pipeline that bring gas from Israel into Gaza. They destroy all the area where we bring goods into Gaza. 
So you see people that not only that they come against you, but they don't even want you to help them. And it's so sad because they're telling the world, look, Israel is committing a massacre. Rajib Tayyip Erdogan just a minute ago just tweeted that Israel is massacring the Palestinians. The, the Security Council in the UN is going to convene in a few hours special special session of what's going on in Gaza. No one, no one is going to hold Hamas responsible for what they are, they are doing. Only the only thing they look is the high death toll that, by the way, passed the 45 right now. And why is it? These are terrorists, and these are people that are used by terrorists. That's not innocent people that just walked uh, home or to their work. No one wants to kill them. No one wants to hurt them. But it's so sad. You know, our former um, uh, and late female Prime Minister, Golda Meir, said uh, something very powerful regarding uh, this particular um, uh, thing that we see that the, the Palestinians and the Arabs in general did, but the Palestinians are doing right now uh, to the Israelis. Um, in fact, I, I posted it to, earlier, and she said the following thing. She said, um, we can forgive the Arabs for killing our children, but we cannot forgive them for forcing us to kill their children. We will only have peace with the Arabs when they love their children more than they hate us. I think it's very powerful. It's powerful because we we don't want to kill them. We don't want to fight them. We don't want anything to do with them. But in fact, they force us to kill them. They force us to, to, to act against them. And it seems like that's what Hamas wants. Hamas is satisfied with a higher number of casualties in order to present to the world the Palestinian problem. And they don't care about their people. They don't care about their future. They don't care about life. They care about death and destruction as a way and a mean to tell the world, here we are, we exist. And it's so sad that the world is falling for it. And the Security Council, that body of so many hypocrites, and thank God Nikki Haley's there, and she's probably going to prevent any decision and any, and any uh, resolution that will be against Israel. But thank God that someone is sober over there and is not drunk with all of those lies and deception that is going on there. Now, allow me to say a few words about the importance of the embassy's opening in Jerusalem. Basically, you understand Jerusalem is back on, on the table, in the center. We, we, we see, actually, that Israel is not only receiving recognition as a, as a world power in so many different areas, but we see that Israel receives recognition as a sovereign country with its capital, no longer the world can say, we love you, but we will decide what capital is going to be yours, or we're going to ignore your decision to have Jerusalem as your capital. The F-16s are taking off right now behind me, by the way, and they're on their way to Gaza. So things are escalating over there, as I said. But um, what I want you to know is this. It is done. It is official. And what all former presidents were afraid of, that this is going to be when all hell is going to break loose. No. The world goes on. America had moved its embassy, and tomorrow will be a new day. By the way, tomorrow, the Palestinians are going to mark the day of disaster, the Nakba. You probably are asking, how come today is May 14, 1948, and 2018, and the Israelis don't celebrate today? Well, it's because Israelis don't follow the non-Jewish calendars when it comes to their holidays. We do follow calendars um, um, for the sake of civilian life. However, when it comes to our holidays, which are predominantly biblical, we always take the Hebrew date, the Hebrew calendar. In the month of the uh, establishment of Israel in 1948 was the month of Iyar, and the day uh, was, uh, was, um, it was the 28th of uh, Iyar, and, um, and, um, and that is why um, 
when that date came on the calendar this year, that's when we celebrate the Day of Independence here in Israel. Um, the rest of the world is, is, of course, always marking things by the non-Jewish calendars. And for the Palestinians, May 14, 1948 was their disaster, so they say. And ever since May 14 or May 15, the next day, because the independence was, I don't know if you know that, was in between, on the midnight of between the 14th and the 15th, that the, the, the flag of the British mandate was lowered and they left. And so for the Palestinians, May 14 and May 15 are are mentioned as the days of rage and of the days of disaster. Our independence is their disaster. And so tomorrow they're planning another day of rage, another march of many, many. If today they manage to bring 40,000, could be that they'll bring more tomorrow. They're, they're of course closing schools and closing working places and they're sending everyone to the border. One thing is for sure, um, it is amazing to me that um, on the day of disaster for our enemies, the Americans not only 70 years ago acknowledged Israel as a state, but 70 years later they acknowledged Jerusalem as its capital and officially after dragging the feet by so many presidents, finally for the first time since President Clinton's term while the act, the Jerusalem Act was passed in Congress, finally there was a president that follows through his election campaign promises. For the first time an American president is not afraid of evil, is not afraid of small little politicians. He, he understands that there is so much so much, so much, so much trash going on. And, and he understands that there is a lot of power and money involved in all of this. The Palestinians may be very poor, but their leaders are multi-millionaire, living in mansions, palaces. They have mansions all around the world. The Palestinian president has a much has as a private plane, $50 million worth private plane, when the Israeli Prime Minister doesn't have one. They they steal from their people and they take all the money that the world is sending the Palestinians, they take it to their own pockets. President Trump realized that he immediately cut all the aid to the Palestinian Authority until something is going to be done. Not only that, believe it or not, but I, I'm sure some of you heard that there are several secret meetings, private meetings that are going on right now between John Kerry and Iranian counterparts from the time of the deal because they, they, uh, they just received an information that the Iranians, unless they receive assurances that they will get the deals, the money, and um, the cash flow from the, de from the Iran deal, they will expose the names of those who received bribery from them for the sake of signing the agreement. That alone can tell you how twisted this Iran deal was when politicians received money under the table. I'm not even sure if the almost two billion dollars in cash that America paid the Iranians, if all of it went to terror or maybe some of it was used to pad the pockets of several of American uh, uh, and, and other European leaders that um, are pushing so hard for that deal. Ladies and gentlemen, the swamp must be dried and the, the, the length and the depth and the width of the corruption is unbelievable. And right now things are being exposed and, and everybody is being put to shame with what is going on over there right now. Another takeoff is, is, is now going on right now. I hope you'll be able to hear me as they're flying right above my, above my house. Just a minute. I wish you could see it. It's so beautiful to see those aircraft. These F-16s are on their way to destroy Hamas targets in Gaza right now.
As we speak right now, even Israeli tanks are attacking several Hamas targets in the northern part of Gaza. Israel is determined not to let this to escalate to something more than what it is right now. We're determined to limit that to mo not more than 40,000 people, and uh, we do not want the number of casualties to rise. You understand, the Bible says that it in, in Deuteronomy 30, the Lord said through Moses, Here I put before you today evil and good, death and life. And then he said, Choose life. There is death and there is life. Death is evil, life is good. We choose life while they choose death. We choose good while they choose evil. It is so simple. And it is so amazing that there is a religion that sanctifies death in order, instead of sanctifying life. And, and to me, um, it, it is so alarming to see that. Now, many of you might be com a, bit, a little bit confused with, uh, with what's going on. Uh, you write me and you say, wait a minute, you're talking about how safe and secure and prosperous Israel is, but all we hear about is Iran attacking and the Palestinians this and that. How come you're so safe and so secure? Well, first of all, what did the Iranians did? What did they do? They shot 20 or 30 rockets that never fell in Israel's territory. What happens in Gaza? Who is getting killed there? They themselves, not us. We're strong. We're safe. We're secure. Look, the only thing I hear is the takeoff of my own aircrafts going to take care of business. And, and trust me, the countries around Israel all understand that they don't want to deal with us. Israel has the strongest military in the Middle East and the, one of the best air forces in the world. Israel has one of the best intelligence services in the world. Countries don't want to mess up with us right now. Iran tried and <laughs> they wish they didn't. Um, financially, countries want help from Israel. I mean, the innovation, the, 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 the agriculture, the medicine, water, um, cyber security, um, even weapons systems that countries want to buy that are very sophisticated. We are here, and, and, and countries understand that there is much more benefit from being friends of Israel than being st and standing against Israel. And so right now, we have uh, relations uh, with, with Bahrain, unofficial ones, with Bahrain and the EAAU, the United Arab Emirates, the, the UAE, with Saudi Arabia. Of course, we had peace with Jordan, with peace with Egypt. We're much stronger than ever. And, and you need to understand that there will never be a day that there will be no enemies around us. That's not the case. The case is that after all those years that we were gone, Israel is back in the land. Israel, just as the Bible says, and if you read Ezekiel 38, by the way, the description of the war that is about to come speaks of how, of how the enemies come to the land that was recently repopulated by Israel, by the Jewish people, after all those years that it was desolated. So definitely it speaks of the return of Israel back to the land. We're back in this area and we have such a, uh, a... Now I see a report right now. There's an Arab report. You just heard the takeoff of the Israeli jets. Uh, there's another Arab report right now of an Israeli strike, airstrike in Gaza. It's very interesting. You guys get to see something that hasn't happened yet. And minutes later, we get reports from the Gaza Strip. Ladies and gentlemen, the American embassy had moved. It is a significant step towards um, Israel's even more security and stability and um, um, prosperity, in my, may I say. And uh, the question is, is this going to last forever or is it just a calm before the storm? And that is going to be the topic of my message uh, this coming Saturday in Cincinnati, Ohio. We're going to have a prophecy conference for those of you who wants to tune in. Um, it's going to be live on hischannel.com, 
his channel dot com is a it's an internet um um christian uh, broadcast um and uh, we're going to have there a live broadcast from the conference and my message there will be the calm before the storm we're going to try and look at what is happening now and what is going to happen in the very near future so for those of you who think that israel has war i invite you this is peaceful galilee look at the valley of armageddon right over there behind look how peaceful it is here look how tranquil look how beautiful it is in fact besides what's going on in gaza right now and, and it is in gaza not even in israel our country is super safe no one is anxious no one has any thoughts of wars or anything and uh, we are we're very confident not not we're not we're, we're not reckless we understand the dangers and we understand that the russian smiles today can turn into something else tomorrow we understand that if if they get the chance they will do something we understand that but until that happens we are enjoying today an unprecedented time of peace stability security and prosperity i know it's hard for many of you to understand that you need to come over here i just sent off a team of 90 people from different parts of the world that were on a tour with me in israel they were shocked how peaceful and how safe it is and they were here while the iranians attacked and they heard nothing and they felt nothing it is more peace peaceful than you can even imagine and there's a lot of chit chats about you know uh, Psalm 83 coming to pass very soon all the enemies of Israel are going to gang uh, all about around it and, and destroy it no 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 those were the days of 1948 those were the days of 1967 enough is enough the countries around Israel are not coming against Israel the countries that are coming against Israel will do so, but they're not the immediate tier. They are the second tier, and we're, we know that. You and I know that. We know that Russia is going to come. We know that Iran will join. We know that Turkey will join. But that's not going to be neither Jordan nor Egypt. And, in, and shenanigans done by the Palestinians we've been having for the last... 70 years it's not anything that can destroy us or threaten us another wave of f-16s flying i believe that these are the aircrafts that are approaching landing right now after the strike in the gaza strip they're not taking off they are approaching landing right now in the airbase behind me so my 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 point is that um we need to keep things in the right perspective um, we need to uh, enjoy this moment of prosperity and peace and as believers we need to enjoy this also in order to preach the gospel and spread the word of God because I believe that once the war will start there's a very good chance that we're out of here and people are asking me how come you think that we're out of here when that war will come I again I don't know the day and the hour of the rapture but I do know one thing it's gonna be very very unusual and unlikely to be a conflict where America is not gonna defend Israel America is more than ever before America is standing by Israel today and telling the whole world um, um, that were by Israel. America, by the way, in the last conflict with Iran, the last round last week, threatened to strike Iran if Iran will attack Israel. Just so you know, I'm just telling you that. America is uh, telling the world that, and today was a, a display of, of that particular thing, that America is standing by Israel. There is no greater friend to America than Israel. So you need to think twice before you attack Israel. Um, in fact, some people say that Benjamin Netanyahu is desired as, a, as, as, as someone to go and talk to because he is 
a channel to reach uh, the ear of President Trump. You should have seen the number of born-again, spirit-filled Christian believers and leaders at the opening of the embassy today. You need to understand it is unprecedented. A, a prayer was, was, was made public in the name of Jesus there by Pastor Robert Jeffress over there. My point is this. Should the rapture take place before Ezekiel's war, America's leadership is gone and America as a country will not be able to stand and protect Israel. It's very plain and very simple. Now will that be that which is going to cause America's fall and Russia's taking advantage of the situation and, and invading into Israel? Maybe. I'm not a scholar, a military scholar. I can only look at things in, 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 and look at the options that we have. I don't know the day and I don't know the hour, but I do know one thing. These are the, these are the times and these are the seasons. So it's very, very interesting to see um, what is going on here. And um, in my wildest and sweetest dreams, I never imagined that I will see the day where an American president will be so much on our side and he will be so much against the evil and the wrong that was done to Israel throughout the years. I never in my wildest dreams uh, imagined that I will see an American ambassador in the UN that will put to shame everyone around there and tell them how hypocrites they are. We always did that. We, but we stood all by ourselves and we thought no one understands us. And for the past eight years, you know, even the American administration was not really fully on our side. In just about a month before that administration was gone, they were, they took part of, of the most vicious um, um, United Nations uh, Security Council resolution against Israel that basically says that even the Western Wall and the Jewish Quarter are not Israelis and not Jewish, and not legally uh, ours. And, and thank God the Lord answered the prayers of so many, and we have a, a president that loves the unborn, loves family values, loves Christianity, and he loves Israel and loves the Bible. These are things that we need to understand. They're historical. They are unprecedented. Uh, they ha there has never been a president that was that good to Christians in the U.S. and that good to Israel than this president. You, you would argue, you can argue that, you know, President Ronald Reagan was a great president, and I, I will agree with you, but no one got even closer to the level of commitment and the level of support and the level of friendship that we see now from the American side under President Trump. There is no other administration before that was even close to this, and we feel that. You know, we, we have to pinch ourselves every day. Is that true? Can that be real? It, it can, I mean, it's too good to be true. We, we're like, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I heard some Israelis that, you know, the Israeli soccer team of Jerusalem is now changing its name to Beitar Trump Jerusalem. I mean, of course, I'm not sure anyone will allow them, but that tells you the level of admiration that the Israelis have for this president unlike anything we've ever seen before. I'm a member of several online communities that are getting intelligence uh, uh, information uh, straight from the mouth of the horse as things happen. I've never seen level of communication with so much admiration. We're, a, we're, we're in awe as Israelis, in awe at the at what we see and we're, we're no longer surprised when we see the embassy now move to Jerusalem because what we've seen throughout the months that led to the move of the embassy was unlike anything we've ever seen before in our lives. Even President Truman that, that he recognized Israel as a country wasn't uh, at that level of commitment because his administration was not on the same page with him. Uh, you, you, you need to learn some history and understand that we've never seen a, an entire administration that is so much on our side, especially now with, 
when the secretary, the current secretary of state, and the uh, the uh, national uh, security advisor, the current ones, we could have not asked for a better team for us as a country. By unmasking Iran, America received also the uh, validity as as a friend also uh, from other Arab countries such as Jordan and Saudi Arabia and Egypt and the e, the UAE and, and Bahrain and other countries as well. So America is being admired by the good ones and is being, or I'm talking about the administration, and is being hated by the evil ones right now. And, and that is not something I could say about the previous administration. The previous administration um, lost its credibility in, in, in a way that none of the allies that America used to have in the Middle East trusted it. And there is a, there is a trust now. There, there is something else right now. And I know that people try to imagine that there is a sense of war in the air, but all we feel is sense of peace in the air. Uh, the, the Koreans will, will tell you that, and even here we can tell you that. Um, escalation with Iran. All all that happened with Iran is the humiliation of Iran. And do I think we're done with them? No. Do I think we're done with any enemy that we have around? No. Do I think that a war will not come? It will. It will, but it will be a different one. It will be a big one, and it will be something that will will take place um, in in a different atmosphere. Um, and and again, America's. Uh, America's role now is very crucial. So um, I'm I'm just trying to convey today not only our appreciation, but also to convey to all of you today a feeling that is shared by many Israelis nowadays: a feeling of euphoria, a feeling of love and respect that we, we get from countries that we never got before. Um, and um, we're almost afraid that it's just too good to be true. Yeah, we might hear the F-16s earlier, but all I hear now is beautiful birds that are all around telling me it's very, very peaceful here. Um, that's basically um, that's basically it for today. Um, more will come out regarding the Iranian deal and and the and the very uh, corruption behind it in the next few days, I'm sure. And um, I will keep you updated about if there is anything to update you on um, when I'm in the U.S. Um, that's it, guys. I'm a happy Israeli today. We're proud of the U.S. administration and their bold move. We don't like what we see in the Gaza Strip. I hope I conveyed to you what we what is really going on there and, and what the other side is doing to its own people. And I pray, I pray that they will get to their senses and somehow value life over death. And I pray that the, that evil regime will no longer exist over there. Iran is behind the scene paying them the money and they are they are getting the people to to do the things that they should not be doing. Um, this is it. We're going to close with a prayer and uh, I could use your prayers also as I travel tomorrow to Canada but mostly to the US um, and um, Thank you again for everything. Please subscribe to our um, YouTube channel in order to see everything over there. Um, it's Behold Israel. Um, you can also subscribe to our newsletter through the website. And you can also look at Instagram and see some amazing pictures. Instagram is Behold Israel, one word. Amazing, amazing pictures that we, we took in the last few days, not only from Israel, but also from Petra and Jordan as our group was there. Let's pray. Yevarechecha Adonai veishmerecha. Yaer Adonai panav elecha veichuneka. 
יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Shalom. The peace that surpasses all understanding. May the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Peace give you peace now, always, and everywhere. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Shalom. God bless you from peaceful, tranquil, and beautiful Galilee with the Valley of Armageddon behind. Thank you, and God bless you. Bye-bye.